Imagine you and your team are coming back to base from a successful raid. Every slot of your inventory is full of juicy loot, like sulfur, crude, AKs, and components. You enter your compound and dump your entire inventory into a single box. And before you even make it inside, every item you depoted is automatically sorted in your open core. The rows of guns and components automatically sort themselves into boxes. The sulfur and crude automatically start cooking. And with no effort at all, you are ready for your next adventure. All of this is possible using basic industrial components and minimal effort. The industrial system I will show you today is cheap enough to be built by a trio and powerful enough to support a 20-man clan. This video will teach you how to build the entire system step-by-step step in a real base and is designed to follow the progression of your wipe. Once you play a wipe with your base fully automated, it's hard to go back. Although it isn't essential, setting up auto furnaces early in your wipe can help speed up progression. Here we will be building the auto furnace system shown by Extreme Speed in their Ultimate Auto Smelter Guide video, which is linked below. All credit for the system goes to Extreme Speed, who I highly recommend checking out. To get started, we will need five storage adapters plus one storage adapter for each furnace or refinery, five conveyors, two splitters, one combiner, one generator, one or gate, 35 low grade, at least one igniter per furnace or refinery. If your furnaces are placed close enough together, it's possible to use fewer igniters, enough splitters to power all of your igniters with one additional output slot available. You can also use branches, but this costs more metal fragments. To power the system, you will need five power. This can easily be obtained from a single solar panel connected to a small battery. Start by choosing an input box for ore and crude and an output box for cooked items. Choose a safe spot in your base for the input box, as this will be used later once the open core is fully set up. The output box will be replaced later, so don't worry about its exact placement while your base is being built. Place up to four storage adapters on the input box and connect them together. Place a storage adapter on the output box. Place two splitters, then four conveyors in groups of two. Place a combiner after the conveyors. Place a conveyor for the output box. Place adapters on each furnace and refinery you would like connected to the automatic system. Then place igniters near each furnace and refinery. Back inside the base, connect the last open adapter on the input box to the first splitter. Then connect the splitters to each other and pipe the splitters into the conveyors. Connect the bottom two conveyors into the combiner. As Extreme Speed explains in their video, the top two conveyors are check conveyors and don't actually move any of the raw material into the furnaces. These conveyors check that both wood and ore are present in the input box before ore is moved into the furnaces. The bottom two conveyors actually move raw material into the furnaces. Set the filter for the first conveyor to wood with no maximum value. Set the filter for the second conveyor to metal, sulfur, and HQM ore. Add crude oil if you have a refinery in the system. If you are using large furnaces, set the maximums to 11 metal, 22 sulfur, 6 HQM, and 4 crude. If you are using small furnaces, set the maximums to 3 metal, 5 sulfur, and 2 HQM. Set the filter for the third conveyor to metal, sulfur, and HQM ore, with no maximum value. Again, add crude oil if you have a refinery in the system. Set the filter for the fourth conveyor to wood and set the maximum to 12, which works for both small and large furnaces. Leave the settings on the output conveyor empty. Now we can work on powering all of the conveyors. Take five power from any source and connect it to the first conveyor. Then use the pass-through port to daisy chain all of the conveyors together, making sure to wire the output conveyor last. Connect the filter pass of the first conveyor to the turn-on of the second conveyor. Then connect the filter fail of the first conveyor to the turn-off of the second conveyor. Repeat this for the third and fourth conveyors. Now we can set up the auto ignition system designed by Corrector in the Rustricity Discord, which will automatically start the furnaces when ore is dropped into the input box. This system supports up to 39 igniters, so keep that in mind when setting it up. Place the generator and add 35 low-grade fuel. Then place an ore gate and enough branches and splitters for all of the igniters you placed earlier. The circuit I am showing here supports nine igniters. First, connect the filter pass from the fourth conveyor to either input of the or gate. Then, connect the output of the OR gate to the force start of the generator. Then, connect the power out of the generator to the branch and set the branch out to 1. Then, connect the branch out of the branch into the force stop of the generator. Finally, connect the power out of the branch to the first splitter, then connect the first splitter to the remaining splitters.
Now that the system is set up, we need to connect all the furnaces, refineries, and igniters. Start by connecting all of your furnaces together in a circular pattern, with the first furnace in the chain being next to the last furnace. The refinery can be connected anywhere in the chain. Run a pipe from the combiner to the first furnace of the chain. A single pipe will probably not be long enough to reach the first furnace, so place industrial combiners along the way to extend the pipe. Industrial piping can block building blocks from being placed, so place the piping carefully. Color coding the pipe can be helpful in case you ever need to replace it. Connect the last furnace in the chain to the output conveyor, extending the pipe using combiners if needed. Now we can connect the igniters to the splitters. Simply wire each igniter to an open port on a splitter. Using two wire tools can help speed up this process. The system is done. Add wood, ore, and crude to the input box. To start the auto smelter, turn on the check conveyors and the output conveyor, leaving the bottom conveyor of each pair off. If your furnaces don't automatically start, just remove all the wood from a single furnace, and it should start back up again. Once your base is secure enough to move loot into the open core, you can begin setting up the auto sorting system. We will start by converting the TC loot room into a buffer box room. These buffer boxes will store any items that don't have a dedicated box in your open core and any items that overflow from your open core boxes. Add an adapter to each box you would like to convert to a buffer box. Make sure to add enough buffer boxes for the needs of your team, as when the boxes are completely full, items will remain stuck in your drop boxes. More buffer boxes can be added later if needed. Now you can connect all of your buffer boxes together. Keep track of where the first and last boxes in the chain are, as we will need to connect other systems to them later. Once the buffer boxes are connected together, you can start setting up depot boxes around your base. These boxes are the inputs to the auto sorting system, and I recommend placing one at every entrance to your base or compound, one on the roof of your base, and one in your open core. On each depot box, place up to four adapters and connect them together. This speeds up how fast items will be pulled out of the boxes and into the sorting system. If you have more than eight depot boxes, only use one adapter per box so you don't go over the 32 adapter limit. Now combine the outputs of all of your depot boxes into a single pipe by connecting them to a tree of industrial combiners. Place the combiner tree in a convenient spot and make sure there are open inputs as you will need to pipe into it later for other systems. Depot boxes can also be connected together when convenient. Now that the outputs of the depot boxes are combined into a single pipe, we can build a super sucker system that will greatly increase the speed at which items get pulled from the boxes. To get started, you will need seven conveyors, three splitters, three combiners, and seven power. Start by placing the splitters near the depot box combiner tree. Place two conveyors underneath each splitter and another conveyor to the right of the third splitter. Leave the settings on the conveyors blank. Place three combiners to the right of the last conveyor. Now connect the output of the combiner tree into the first splitter, then connect the splitters together. Pipe the remaining outputs of the splitters into the inputs of the conveyors placed below. Finally, connect all of the conveyor outputs together using the combiners. Power the system by using the pass-through port to daisy-chain all of the conveyors together. Depending on your available resources, you can reduce or increase the number of conveyors, but based on my testing, there is no benefit to adding more than 9 conveyors. Now turn on all of the conveyors and connect the output of the final combiner into the first buffer box. Test the system by dropping loot into the depot boxes. Now that the depot boxes are connected to the buffer boxes, we can get started on setting up auto sorting for your open core. You will need 
large boxes for the open core, at least 10 splitters, one adapter for each box in the open core, one conveyor for each box in the open core, and at least one power for each conveyor. Start by placing boxes in your open core in whatever layout you feel is best. Here's an example layout I've used in the past. I recommend testing out different layouts for your base in a build server. When placing boxes, make sure there's enough space for two adapters on each box, as some boxes will need extra inputs or outputs. After you have a layout you are happy with, lock all of the boxes. This is very important to do, as it prevents raiders from draining all of the loot from your buffer boxes and it buys you extra time in a raid. Then place a splitter on an open wall or ceiling tile. Make sure to pick a spot that is close to your open core. Place the remaining splitters in rows of three and connect each row together as shown. Each of the open outputs will connect to one box in your open core, so if you need more outputs, place more splitters. Now connect the last buffer box to the topmost splitter. Use combiners to extend the pipe if needed. Then place one conveyor and one adapter per box. Connect the conveyor to the adapter. If you have multiple boxes storing the same item, you can connect the boxes together, then connect the first box to a single conveyor. Now connect each conveyor to an open output of the splitter tree. then branch off enough power for all the conveyors. Here I have 18 conveyors, so I will need 18 power. Use the pass-through port to daisy-chain all of the conveyors together. The sorting system is almost finished. All you need to do is set the filters for each conveyor to your liking. If you ever get confused about which box a conveyor is connected to, you can shift-click on the output of the conveyor to highlight the pipe. You can use item categories to quickly filter for groups of similar items, such as tools, weapons, or ammo. When setting filters for component boxes, make sure to add CCTV cameras and targeting computers separately, as they are not included in the category list. If you are combining multiple items into a single box, it can be useful to set maximum values so all items show up in the box. For example, I set this box to store hazmats and NVGs. If a maximum value is not set for hazmats, the entire box will fill up with them and the NVGs will be stuck in the buffer boxes. Many more useful filter lists can be found on rustconveyorfilters.com. Once you have set all of your filters, turn on each conveyor and watch as your loot gets sorted for you. The final step to complete the industrial system is to connect the auto sorting system to the auto furnace system. Start by placing a combiner close to your open core splitter tree. Connect an open output from the splitter tree to the combiner. Then connect an output from the wood box in your open core to the combiner. Now place a conveyor near your ore input box. Remove the old ore output conveyor and connect its power to this new conveyor. Then connect the combiner to the new conveyor. Connect the output of the conveyor to the ore input box. Set the filters on the conveyor to 2,000 wood, 22,000 sulfur ore, 22,000 metal ore, 100 HQM ore, and 500 crude oil. These values are set to prevent a single resource from clogging the ore input box. Now we need to connect the output of the furnace system to the open core sorting. Find the last furnace connected in the chain and disconnect the pipe. Now find the closest drop box to this furnace and place a conveyor next to it. Connect the last furnace to this conveyor. Set the filters on the conveyor to metal fragments, sulfur, HQM, low-grade fuel, and charcoal, without any maximum values. 
Connect the conveyor to the drop box and power it using one power. Now any raw ore dropped into the depot boxes will filter into the auto furnace input box and wood will be pulled from the open core. The cooked ore from the furnaces will be sent to the buffer boxes, which will send it to the designated box in the open core. Now that the auto sorting system is complete, we can easily add other useful automations, starting with automatic crafters. Here I will show how to make an automatic crafter for meds, but the same circuit can be used to craft any item. You will need one industrial crafter, one combiner, two conveyors, one medical syringe blueprint, and three power. Start by placing the industrial crafter on your workbench and place the blueprint inside of the crafter. Add three junk items to prevent overcrafting. Then place one conveyor on either side of the crafter. Pipe the first conveyor to the input of the crafter. Then pipe the output of the crafter to the second conveyor. Pipe the second conveyor to the box you want the crafted items to depot to. Take three power and connect it to the first conveyor. Use the pass-through to power the second conveyor, and then the crafter. Now place a combiner close to the low-grade, cloth and metal fragment boxes. Here I have low-grade and cloth filtering into the same box. Take an output from each box and connect it to the combiner. Connect the combiner to the input conveyor for the crafter. Now we can set the filters for the conveyors. For the input conveyor, add all the items required for your crafting recipe and set the maximum value to the amount needed to craft a single item. Set the filters to 15 cloth, 10 low grade, and 10 metal fragments. Adding minimum values to auto crafters is important as it prevents all of your resources being crafted into items. The exact minimum values to use depend on how many resources you have and will likely change through the course of a wipe. For the output conveyor, add the item being crafted and set the maximum value to the amount you want crafted. Here we will set 12 meds to be crafted. Finally, turn on both conveyors and the crafter. The final automation we will cover is auto upkeep. This system can be very helpful when upkeeping larger bases. You will need up to three combiners, one conveyor for each TC you want to auto upkeep, one adapter for each TC, enough splitters to have one output per TC and one power per TC. Start by placing a combiner near your wood, stone, and metal boxes. Take an output from each box and connect it to the combiner. If you are already using the output on a box, add another adapter and take the output from there. Pipe the output of the combiner to someplace closer to your TCs. Place enough splitters for all your TCs here and attach the pipe to the first splitter, then connect the splitters together. Next to the splitters, place one conveyor per TC. Connect a splitter output to each conveyor. Place one adapter on each TC in your base. Then connect one conveyor to each TC. Industrial piping can go through windows, which is useful for protecting external TCs. Use the pass-through port to daisy-chain the conveyors together. Set the filter of each conveyor to transfer slightly more than the upkeep required by the TC. Finally, turn on all of the conveyors. Now your fully automated base is complete. This video just covers some of the basics, and other industrial systems such as auto lockers or automatic vending machines can easily be added using the sorted boxes in your open core. A full circuit diagram, along with other useful links, are in the description. Thanks for watching.